I'm here. Okay, I'm on the phone with Mr. John Barnes. We've been working his investigation in Westminster, Colorado, over an issue involving a uh, a it was a Denver uh, police cadet, and basically what happened is uh, Mr. Barnes was having problems with the individual who's in his young 20s, hot riding up and down the street. So he decided to take action by trying to document. Uh, these incidents with his his, uh, his camera, and one evening he took a picture with his camera, and next thing you know, he ends up getting summons for menacing, and then he has secured an attorney who, despite the obviousness of the case, recommended he plead guilty to a misdemeanor of uh, disorderly conduct, and now he has since then retained another lawyer who is basically indicating that his freedom of speech uh, rights have been violated. Is that true, John? Yes, sir. And can you give us an update of what's going on with your case? I've got uh, I, I've got to go to court the 7th of June, and uh, we're withdrawing my uh, I, I tried to withdraw my plea Okay. so that I can take this to trial. Now, who's your attorney that, that you have hired since then? Steve Loth, okay. L-O-T-H-E, or not E, L-O-T-H. Is this one of the attorneys that policeabuse.com recommended to you? Yes, sir. Okay. He's a Boulder attorney. Okay. Now, what's his, what's his take on his case, on this case here? He's kind of upset with the attorney, Kim Diego, that uh, she didn't do her job. Okay. That's what his take is. Well, what is it that she failed to do? She didn't uh, pursue this at all. She tried to. She tried to get the. Uh, she threatened me actually. Mm -hmm. She told me that if I uh, didn't plead guilty to this, that the neighbors were all going to gang up on me because I complained about their dogs too. Anyway, they were going to uh, gang up on me and put a restraining order at both ends of my, to the south of me and to the north of me, so that they could. Uh, deny me access to my own home and keep me out of my own house that I'm trying to take care of my elderly mother at. And she's 79 years old and she needs me here. She's been in the hospital and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they were just trying to kick me off the block because they wanted their dogs to get to bark at, and this kid with this hot rod car to race up and down the street. They just wanted to raise hell over here. So instead of me having my rights, they denied me my rights and tried to let them have all of their rights. Even the police were involved in harassing me. Okay. And it, was this all stemming from the fact that you were using your uh, your camera to vo photograph the cadet? Absolutely. Uh, okay. See, they got, that's what pissed them off real bad. Mm -hmm. They really got mad at me for that. They were telling me that I was crazy and to go back in the house, and they said obscenities to me. And uh, in front of my mom and stuff, even I, I couldn't believe that they thought they could get away with this. Okay. And I have with me a copy of the Westminster Police Department's police report involving that incident that occurred at your near your residence, and it involves a. Uh, hold on a second. Yes, my name is Mr. Angus Timmons is the guy's name, who is a neighbor. He's a junior. Yeah, he's, he's actually, there's a senior, and this is a junior. And he's in his early 20s, and apparently uh, he, he wrote that, um, according to the report, that he was driving on Clay Street and that an object was thrown towards a car, and then in quotation marks, 9-volt bat, which I'm presuming he means battery, Right. And it struck his car. He got out, and John verbally harassed him, threatened him across the yard, and pointed a red light at him. And he accused me of pointing a gun at him at first. Okay, and stepped inside and called the Westminster Police. And yes, uh, I have the copy of the transcripts for the 911 police uh, call, and it indicated uh, that the caller said that he thought you had a gun, but did not 
indicate that there was any evidence of that other than the fact that you were holding an object. object. Now, what was the object that he was holding at the time? I had a Sony CyberShot camera that's chrome in color, and it didn't have a laser light on it or a flash attachment because I didn't know how to work it yet. Okay. At any rate, I took three still shots of him as he drove by my house. Okay. And my back's hurt, so it took me a minute to get onto my feet. And you were the one to call the Westminster police? No, uh-uh. I okay. went after I took the three still shots. I laughed and said it has an atomic clock on it, and I got you. I'm going to turn you in for this because it was 1.30 in the morning when he raced his car past my house. Okay, and I'm going to hold the, the uh, report up that he wrote. And he basically said that you stepped inside and called the Westminster police, which is, you know, all these statements are, for the most part, unsubstantiated in that he made conclusions without a premise. And to my knowledge and to the knowledge of almost anybody in the United States that if you have a camera in your public, you have a right to take uh, photographs of anything you see because it is protected speech. Now, I examined the police report. and The identity of the police officer doesn't jump out right now. Let me see if I can find it here. Which really, the police officer is not relevant. He's just basically the one that issued the summons. And if you look at the uh, the the police report, it looks like a fifth grader wrote it. Uh, fragments yeah. of sentences, poor grammar. I mean, this is definitely not uh, what we would consider. Kid. Yeah, he's not a full fledged cop. He was somebody's kid that they were teaching how to do it or something. Well, it, it was a poorly written police report, and it, here's the thing that I have a question about. Where is that battery? They uh, said they threw it away. Okay. I've never seen it either. Okay, so the battery basically vanished from evidence. Therefore, the very core evidence that was used against you no longer exists, and if your attorney had any sense of a good attorney skills would have at least move the court to dismiss the case on the fact that the evidence was was gone and that everything else is protected speech and that you have a right to photograph take photographs in public right. so with that said we're moving on to the second phase of the investigation and that's giving the evidence that you need for your attorney to persuade the court to either Dismiss or go to, or we you know we can go to a trial and, and have a jury, you know, persuaded into acquitting because there's no reasonable person that would believe that, you know, you were menacing or harassing that you were just simply trying to document an incident. So, uh, with that said, I think we're on the right path of uh, getting the the truth and justice that you need and deserve. Earlier that day, I took pictures of him with that same camera, and he knows I had the camera. He. Uh, fabricated this story about the gun, and then he fabricated the story about the battery as well. And Ken, what would you support on the on the fabrication of the stories? I uh, took pictures of him earlier in the day, and he looked right at me when I took the picture of him earlier in the day out of my window of my house. I've got a picture of him. He caught a second gear scratch right in front of my house. And that means he busted the tires loose when it shifted into second gear, and he always used to hot rod that car past my house. He almost got out of the picture frame when he done that, and I got I got him anyway on there. And uh, he knows everybody. All the neighbors knew that I'd been taking pictures of him. They were angry as heck. The uh, person to the south of my house that I t or the north of my house that I talk about, she went to Adams County to Judge Beacom. And they ended up putting a lifetime restraining order on me because I took pictures of her car. Her and her daughter got on the stand and lied and said that I called them the B word. And while they were on their in this ladder in their backyard, they they made up this story to try to shut me up so that they could have their dogs bark. Uh, a police officer. Uh, Officer Fawcett of the Westminster Police Department, he told me so. He said, John, they're just trying to figure out a way to shut you up so they can let this woman's dog bark. And that's a direct quote from Officer Fawcett.
Okay. Well, that seems like we're on the right path on the investigation, and I want to remind everybody that this is going to be an ongoing investigation. It will definitely take some time for it to fully manifest, but I feel strongly confident that uh, Mr. Barnes is actually the one in the right and that this case was pointless to begin with. So with that said, I appreciate your time, and we're look, we are looking forward to continuing to help you out in this matter.